Hello, my name is Alan Foom, and today I'm going to talk about advantage oil barrels. So this is the second part of my video on this topic. First part, I defined what an advantage oil barrel is, and now I'm going to talk about how to get there, how to get to a good place. So an advantage oil barrel is a barrel that has a premium in terms of several factors as far as the market is concerned. And it's not just the commodity markets. Now, I've got a video on different types of oil markers, uh, market crudes, and what their different values are. So please check that one out. But it's also... Which type of barrel is advantage to investors? Which type of barrel is advantage in terms of politics and in terms of society? So I define all that in the first video, but now we're going to talk about how to get there. So it's not easy being an oil company. You've got a lot of different people to work with effectively to deliver your projects. Deliver value to your shareholders. These are the owners of the company, investors, the capital markets, keeping all of those folks on track by delivering shareholder value in terms of dividends, buybacks and general shareholder return and keeping a steady ship on the road and potential growth for the future. Governments, both home country and host country governments, keeping these folks in a good place, keeping all of that going together because these are actually our real customers in some ways, particularly in countries where we have PSCs or uh, production sharing contracts. The communities where we operate, absolutely vital because we work amongst people, we have impact on people, both negative and also positive in terms of employment. So we need to minimize the negative, maximize the positive work effectively with the communities that host operations. General society, so things like national uh, non-governmental organizations, both home and host, keeping all of these people in a good place. Working effectively with our employees, getting the right people, retaining the right people. Working effectively with suppliers who provide us with vital tools, vital services to keep ourselves going. So again, Keeping all of this together, very important and quite challenging. So advantage bar oil barrels come in very many wa different ways. So first of all, there's cost. You want cheap oil in terms of cost, in terms of cheap capex, in terms of cheap opex. Politics, political stable, fiscal, stable tax regime, lowest impact possible on the environment to be scalable. So you don't have to always go for very large projects, although this can be advantageous. That has an impact on the investment profile and timing, and also relation to the community. And different company societies will define varying importance of these criteria. So I'll talk a little bit about that. The Western oil majors, um, they've been influenced by several things. So you need to maintain shareholder returns, you need to maintain the dividends, keep the pension funds happy, while operating in a safe and responsible manner. So ESG, environmental social governance, making sure that that's done in an effective way. And they have strategies to do this and they're implementing them with various degrees of actual success. Small listed companies. So you're standing out in an unfashionable sector. Now, we've been not a fashionable sector for the last several years. It's now beginning to change a little bit. But again, if you're a small listed company, you need to try to re give returns to your shareholders to maintain that. Then private ownerships. These are unlisted companies. So either they're owned by private equity or rich individuals such as J.R. Ewing. Returning value. But where do you go to next? What's the next big thing? Do you list? Do you sell out? Uh, where next? And then the national oil companies, they have roughly half the production and roughly three quarters to 80% of the reserves. The large home NFCs, the Saudi Aramco's of this world, the NIOCs of this world, they're paying the nation's bills. So they're vital to the economy of the country, to delivering for their societies. And in international NOCs, so this is Petronas, Petrobras, um, also um, the Chinese companies are in this place and also people like ONGC of India. So you bring resources home, securing the nation's energy future. Again, large challenges. So how do you do it? You've got strategy versus tactics. So strategy is deciding to take part in specific types of ventures, whether you enter a type of venture or you get out of that particular segment. Again, trying to see what the most advantageous thing is for you, for your company and your values, and trying to get in there. And if something doesn't fit into that, trying to see if you can sell that onto someone for whom it is more suitable. And then tactics, doing things in the best way possible, both in operations and development. So ensuring your safety performance, ensuring your environmental performance, ensuring your cost performance, getting things right, doing things the right way. And companies can use what they define as advantage oil barrels to form their both their strategy, what you want to do, and tactics, how you do it. So 
Next, we'll have a little look at something called Covey's Circle. And I've used this in career coaching, which is what I do as a volunteer. And this can be a model that we can apply to this. Now, again, you can disagree with some of what I've said, which is fair enough. You know, people have different opinions. Uh, but there's a primer and see what we do. So Covey has this model of three circles. So in the middle, you've got your circle of control. So that's what you're basically in charge of. Then you have your circle of influence. So this is what you've got influence over, but you're not in control of it. So it's a, you know, two to tango relationship between the two parties. And then you've got your circle of concern. So you have no control or influence over this, really. You may pretend that you do, but you don't. And But these factors affect you greatly, and you need to basically uh, roll with it and get where you want to be. So if you're looking at the first circle, the circle of control, so this is what you're basically in charge of. So environmental performance, big focus on that. Flaring, leakage, scope one and scope two emissions. Just trying to get your environmental performance as good as you can. Your safety performance, absolutely vital. Want to make sure everyone comes home safe at the end of their shift. No excuse. Relations with your communities, people that you work with. Now you can argue that maybe that ought to really be in the white bit, uh, the circle of um, influence, but again, doing your part to get as good a relationship with the people that you work around and you live and you work next to there. You design choice in terms of scalability and investment profile. Again, getting the strategy right to ensure that you use the tactics effectively. So the key thing with the circle control is sort it and then maintain it. Next bit is the circle of influence. So this is the stuff where you've got influence but not control. So again, you've got another party that you're having a relationship with or another set of things that are there. So you've got your costs, you know, your CapEx, your OPEX, you can have your contracting strategy, you make the right design choices, etc. but still it's an environment that you have to work with. You know, for example, $500,000 a day, well, they're $500,000 a day. Relations with the governments, working that effectively, managing contractors effectively, and also working effectively in joint ventures with other oil companies, whether they're ISCs, NOCs, etc., to get the best deal for everybody working together can also argue that some environment and community things would get into this area and also project schedules where you've may have designed a project, but reality turned out a little different because of things that buffered you. But the thing here is that once you've got this sort of maintenance done, the red bit, this is the bit where you have continuous focus action to keep things working, working effectively. Then you have the blue circle, where you have very little or no influence whatsoever. So you've got very limited influence over things like your politics, your fiscal tax policy, regulations, investment fashions. Energy was definitely not flavor of the month the last 10 years. Changed in the last uh, three months or so, but not so there. that has been a challenge. And media perception. If the media is not on your side, you it's kind of difficult to get them on your side. I mean, you can do things about it, but limited. If the media is a cheerleader, you need to try to keep them on side, but they're a fickle bunch, so you need to work on that. And the stuff you have no influence over whatsoever. The world economy, how well that's doing. Geopolitics, if somebody decides to invade the country you're operating in, you've got a bit of a problem. And product demand, again, that's a complicated interplay between society, technology, economics, etc but you don't know what the price of your product's gonna be from day to day. So that's a tough environment to work with, but we've been working with it for a very long time. And the key to that is flexible response. So rolling with it, taking advantage where you can, limiting damage where it needs to be done. So to sum up, different types of company will have different definitions of what barrels advantage for them. West versus East, NOC versus ISC, listed versus private, Asian versus European versus American versus Russian versus Chinese, etc. They will all think a little differently through this. And they've got very own capability of trying to get what they see as advantage barrels, whether existing projects, whether they're in a good place already. So can we get more of this? Make sure that this is done effectively or choosing the right new projects as they come along. And then tactics versus strategy. So doing things the right way, and doing the right things in the first place. And you've got variable capability controlling the factors leading to your advantage. So circles of control, circle of circle of concern. 
So thank you very much. Uh, my name's Alan Foom. Please like, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.